once you understand how the stack data structure works, it is also important to understand the internal working behind it. That will give you a better idea how and when to use which data structure. So coming to stacks, there are a lot of ways you can implement this data structure. And linked list is one of them. In this video, I want to discover a little bit more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So here's what we will do. First, I will give you some basic overview how the stack data structure works. Next, we will see what kind of operations do we want to perform and how does a linked list come into the picture. Going forward, we will try to implement all the functionality of the stack using this linked list data structure. And then we will also do a side by side comparison how this is actually working in action. And as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that all of this sticks in your mind forever. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us just quickly go over the problem that we are trying to solve over here. What you have to do is you have to implement a stack data structure using the linked list, right? And when you're doing it, it should support all the functions that you can do on a stack. And that is push, pop, top, and is empty, right? So just to do a quick refresher, how does a stack actually work? So let us say I have this stack in front of me and I try to perform some operations. Let us say I will try to push two elements. So I push four and then I push a eight, right? Now, when you do the pop operation, what will happen? As soon as you do a pop operation, the top element will be removed from the stack, right? And similarly, what happens when you try to do the top operation? When you do a top operation, you will just be looking at the topmost element in the stack, but you will not remove it, correct? And the last function that we have is if empty. So if your stack is completely empty, you will get a true. And if your stack has any element, you will get a false. So this is just a quick refresher about how the stack data structure actually works. If you want to remember all of this and just want to do a revision, check out my video on stacks. You can find the link in the description below. If you have understood this problem statement now, I would highly recommend you to stop this video right over here, grab a pen and paper and draw a link list for yourself. Try to perform some push and pop operations on your own and see how they're working in a linked list. And when you have come up with some ideas, let us start to move ahead and see how we can actually go about doing this. Right now, we just discussed how a stack works, correct? But if we want to implement a stack using a linked list, we must also understand the nitty gritty of how a linked list works, correct? You can find the link in the description below if you want a quick recap about the linked list data structure. So the basic idea of a linked list is that you have a node in which you can store some value. So let us say in this node, I store a value eight and then I will have a next pointer, correct? And if I have to store another value, I will create one more node. And in this node, again, I can store another value. Let's say I store a eight. If the list ends, the next points to null, right? And the most important condition is that the head of a linked list always points to the first node, right? So now if you have to iterate through this list, you will start from the head node and then you will keep on going ahead until and unless you get a null. If you want to add more values to this list, what will you do? You will create an additional node and then store a new value in it, right? 15. And then what you're going to do is you will update the pointers and then the null value will also be updated, correct? So this is how your linked list is behaving. So in our initial effort, let us try to perform these operations on a stack. So let us say I have the stack with me. And now when I try to add these elements, they will be added in the order four and then eight will go on the top and then 15 will go on the top, correct? So in a stack, now if I ask you, okay, do the pop operation. So you will be reading the topmost value, correct? And that is 15. So a stack will give you the output 15, right? But in a linked list where you are pointing, you're always pointing at the first node, correct? So if I ask you, okay, do the pop operation, what will you do? Will you travel to the very end every time and then retrieve me this value? Think about a case when there are 10,000 nodes in the linked list. Then will you travel all the way towards the end every time I ask you a peak operation or the pop operation? No, right? So this method is kind of inefficient. And what happens if you have to add another value? 
in a stack, if I have to add another value, let's say I add a 16. So it will go on top of 15, right? But with a linked list, what will you do? You will once again travel the entire linked list and you will have to add an element over here, right? So this is so much time consuming. So this tells us that the initial effort of approaching this problem is not correct. Actually, this is not very efficient, but given a lot of time, we can implement a stack using this method, correct? So how do we fix this problem? Well, there is a very neat little trick that you just have to follow. So for a moment, what I'm going to do is I will remove all of this and I'm keeping my stack as it is. So what I'm going to do is I will add a few elements. So I add the element four, correct? In the first place, you have to start somewhere, right? So, okay, I will create a node of a linked list, right? And in this node, I store the value four. The next will point to null. And this will be the head of the linked list as well. So up till now, everything is good. The top of your stack is four and the head of your linked list is also pointing at four. So you're not traversing anywhere, correct? Now let us try to add another element. This is where things will get interesting. So in a stack, I will add eight on top of four, correct? Now try to go step by step. You know that you will have to create a node in a linked list, right? So first of all, let me just create a node. And what I will do is I will assign the value eight in this node, correct? So when you're approaching problems and creating linked lists, it is always a good idea to approach a problem step by step. Up till now, I have just created this node. I haven't assigned it anywhere, right? So try to think up till now, what we did is we took this node and added it towards the end of the linked list, right? The trick over here is that instead of adding towards the end, just add this node in the beginning of the linked list. And once you do it, update your pointers, update the next pointer of eight to point to the head. And then what we're going to do is we will move our head to eight. So does this tell you something? Look at it. The top of your stack points at eight and the head of your linked list also points at eight, right? So you know how you can do the top operation or the peak operation. That is so much fun, right? For some fun part, I will add one more element. This time I will add 15, right? So we're going to follow the same process. Just create a node first, assign the value 15 in this. And then what we're going to do is we will place this node at the correct position. I take this node to the beginning, point the next of 15 to eight, and then I will update my head. So what do you see over here? My head is pointing at 15 and this is also the top of the stack, correct? Now, if I have to do the pop operation, what will happen in a stack? This 15 will go away, correct? And if you have to do this pop operation on the linked list, what will you do? You are just gonna do head dot next. And as soon as you do a head dot next, this pointer will be forever lost in the memory because in a linked list, you can only go ahead. You can never go backwards, right? So this is how you see we are taking advantage of this linked list data structure to implement all of our stack functionality, right? So let us take up an example. Now, what I'm going to do is we will try to sum up everything that we have learned and we will try to perform all of these stack operations and implement them using a linked list. I am doing both of these operations side by side on a stack and over here on a linked list. So you can see how both of these things are actually working. So we start off with our very first operation and that is, is empty. So currently you can see that our stack is completely empty and our head is pointing at null. So in this case, what you're going to do is you're just going to return a true, right? Because your stack is empty. Now. Let us move on to our second operation. What we do over here is we push four. So four gets pushed into the stack. And in a linked list, what we will do is I create a new node and I will point my head to this new node. Let us move ahead now. This time I will be pushing a eight. So when it comes to my stack, I will push an eight on top of it. And for a linked list, what I will do is I will once again create a new node, assign the value eight to it do the next pointer towards the head and I will move my head moving on with my next operation. And that is top. When you do a top operation, what do you get from the stack? From the stack, you will get the output eight, right? And look at the linked list to get the top operation. Just look at the head value. 
for in a link list also you get the value 8 so in both of the conditions you are getting the same value right keep moving ahead this time we will do a pop operation right and as soon as you do a pop what will happen from the stack this element 8 will go away right and what do we do in a linked list we will update our head pointer and we will just move into the next value as soon as we go to the next value the original value is completely lost in the memory right keep moving ahead now now look at the is empty operation what do you get from the stack you can see that there is one element in the stack so you would be expecting that okay i should get a false so you get a false over here and what happens in the case of a linked list you check if your head is null the head is not null right so in this case also what you will do is you will just return a false so you can see how we are able to do similar operations on a stack and implement them using a linked list right try to do these last operations on your own as an exercise for now we will dive into the dry run of the code to see how it actually works in action on the left side of your screen i have all the basic methods that are required to implement this stack data structure using a linked list right and on the right we will try to demonstrate what is actually happening so going over it step by step just look at the push function right when you push in the stack what do we expect to do first of all we create a new node right and in this node we will assign some value x so let us say i am assigning 4 right now correct in the next step what i do is node dot next equals to head right so this will do node dot next and that will point to null correct because that is where head is pointing so to update the pointer of head as the next step we will move our head and as soon as i move my head my head starts to point at 4 and this will form my linked list correct so now if i have to add elements the all the operations will happen in a same way so currently i'll just quickly add two more elements my linked list starts to look like this correct now let us look at the pop function the pop function is very very easy what you have to do is you just have to store the number that is in the head and that is 15 correct then you actually pop the element to pop the element i will just move my head pointer and do a head dot next right and then to actually return the value i will return my number and this will return this value 15 to the user right as this function exits this memory will be lost forever right so the peak function is also very very similar right what you have to just do is instead of doing a next you will return whatever value that the head is pointing to and the last we have an is empty function right so to determine if a stack is empty just check if head is pointing to null if head is null that means the stack is empty if head is not null then the stack is not empty right an interesting thing to notice over here is that all of these operations are happening in an order of one time complexity you can add a node in order of one time you can pop a node in order of one time and you can also peak a node in order of one time and this is what makes everything so beautiful. I hope I was able to simplify how you can implement the stack data structure using a linked list. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know that in all the modern programming languages, you already have inbuilt libraries where you can just start using a stack. But think about a case when you are interviewing. Your interviewer can ask you, okay, if you are using a stack, how do you actually implement one? Because try to think. It is always a good idea to understand the underlying logic because if that logic is clear to you, you can build anything on top of it. And then your interviewer can also ask you that, okay, this is the implementation you are using. How can you speed that up? What else can you do about it? Try to explore a little bit and find out what other data structures can you implement using the linked list data structure. Can you implement a queue also using a linked list? And think about a stack. How else can you implement a stack? Can you use arrays to do it? So whenever you think like this, try to just form all the test cases and try to plug in values and emulate all of the behavior on a linked list or any other data structure that you are doing. So this will give you more idea about how all of these data structures link up together and you can use one in place of the other. That will surely help you during your programming. So if you have any thoughts like this, when you were watching this video, did any other doubts come up to you? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. 
You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify concepts for you. Also let me know what would you like to learn next. Until then, see ya!